Good morning. So we're uh, having a little holiday in the Bulkley Valley right now. And it's a really interesting area. As you can see, it's morning time. And one of my favorite times of the day, about seven in the morning. Off in the distance, you can see the mountains. I'm just out here I've been joining my morning coffee. One of the things, the things I like about the Bulkley Valley, though, is it's, uh, it's kind of a transitional area from being a coastly influenced area to an uh, interior influenced area. And that kind of brings with it a whole bunch of diversity when that happens. It's kind of a unique little pocket of British Columbia that not many people know about. And frankly, I, I honestly I was wondering whether or not to even make this video because what I do know is that uh, locals would like to try to keep it that way. And uh, I don't blame them for that. Let's kind of keep this little place a secret. Don't have overpopulation issues. Don't have all those geo massive geopolitical issues here. It's just the simple life. And a rich ecosystem to boot. Healthy ecosystem. What do I mean by that? Well, you see here, it's very interesting because I'd say probably about 30% of the climate here is influenced from the coast. So you get the you get uh, the precipitation here that the interior does not. We're just on the other side of the Coast Range Mountains. Now on the on the uh, on the west side of the Coast Range Mountains, high precipitation, high precipitation, <laughs> and uh, fewer sun sunny days. Those tall mountains you see off in the distance there. They have a tendency to sock in the weather on the other side. But some of them, some of those clouds get over and continue on past here, and there's still a fair amount of precipitation. I'd say this area was probably 35% coastal and 65% uh, interior. In my opinion, the perfect mix. But at the same time, you kind of, kind of get this rolling countryside of the interior well-drained soils, fine textured soils in many of these areas, so you get kind of a mix of coastal vegetation here, herbaceous and um, interior. Unfortunately, right in behind me, I got a whole bunch of uh, thistle, which is an invasive species. <laughs> but a lot of this is because of the cows. Uh, just a beautiful place for deer hunting. Just this fantastic mix of forestry interface and uh, agriculture, where you've got these pasture lands in between these forested areas. I mean, here we've we've also got these aspen forests, but we also have cottonwood. We've got uh, spruce and pine forests, and well, I'll show you some of the spruce here. Uh, there's this insect called Pisodi strobi, which is referred to as uh, terminal weevil. You can see it here on this spruce. Okay, so the sun's not in your eyes. So this is this little bad boy right here. Terminal weevil killed that fork right there. You get these uh, larvae inside the terminal weevil, the terminals of these spruce trees. They called called a uh, forked or shepherd's crook. Right at the top, you can see that one there. That'll have active brood in it, up there. And they basically turn the tops of these spruce trees to a bit of a cabbage. Multiple tops. So the tree tries to correct the fact that its terminal has been killed, so it shoots up extra branches with the, with the intent of starting a new crown or continuing the crown. Anyhow, really cool area. Not too many people know about this this place in the world. Just the diversity of our biogeoclimatic 
biogeoclimatic. I mean, what, 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 what the heck are you talking about? Are you talking a code here or something? No, bio. It's basically your, the biology of, of the area that you're living in. Biogeo is the soil types, you know, your, the earth that you're, that you're standing on. And climatic is the, is the climatic influence, and, and you get you get these areas. Here comes the darkness. You get these areas that uh, you know they bring up a certain vegetation complex type and ecosystems that derive from your biogeoclimatic. And this area is very special. It really is. And I'd highly recommend to anybody to come visit this place. And, something about it between the rivers which have a lot of fish in them beautiful steelhead fishing the chinook could be in here pretty soon the the, the salmon when they come into the Bulkley river um, they're not too dark by the time they get here when they hit the coast come into the river systems there they're just like bright as a silver dollar but the longer they're in the uh, the fresh water the darker they get you get into the interior of BC they're almost black, <laughs> ready to spawn. But here it's not too bad. And uh, steelhead, tons of trout. We saw some yesterday, just over here down by the river. You got the mix of forestry, agriculture. So there's cows grazing in these pastures. Run into them. Keep running into them. They're they're pretty much wild. This forestry, agricultural interface, and uh, it just works well. I will say though that this year, in this area, the wasps are bad. I just got stung last week. There's a, there's a, there's new nests everywhere. There's one right in the cabin itself here that we're staying in, and we're just trying to make a little bit of a family vacation out of this temporary stay. We came to pick up the kids from uh, Bible camp. They've been into Bible camp for a week. Yeah, I sent my kids to a Bible camp. And if you don't like it, deal with it. I'm not the one with the problem you are, if you've got a problem with that. They had a fantastic time. It's the time of the year to be doing that stuff, right? Spend some time with your family, if you can. Even if it's just to make a, a weekend, a, a long weekend, do what you can to get out. Spend time together. Do some exploring. Hope you're all doing well. Cheers, and as always, may play fun. No. So what happens is that the stonefly, oh. he, uh, when when they when they come out of the water, they shed their their husk. That's an old husk. They sprout wings <gasps> and they fly away. That's his, that's his baby. You can pick it up, can you? No, no, no. Wait, let me get it on film. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a stonefly for sure. Stonefly are like a hugely important staple for fish. Can you pick it up? And what they do is they hover right over the water. You can't see it, but. They hover right over the water and uh, they mate, like suspend right over the water and fish. Just... Is it safe for them to pick it up? Yeah, totally. No, no, no stinger in it? No, it's fine. It's just a husk. There's no, that's a nymph. Cool, eh? Yep. Mother Nature. L little experiment today. So there's been these cows and they've been eluding us and uh, run this farm. You see some cows down there. And they're very skittish, aren't they? Aren't they skittish? So they see us, they run. Like they bolt, they run. So they're gone. They're gone now. And the reason they're gone is because I stopped playing guitar. <laughs> Morgan guitars. Fantastic guitars. Made in BC. Buy a can. Canadian guitars. That we make good acoustics. But. Uh, yeah, so I, I sit there and I'll play some music, and here come the cows. They like the music. <laughs>